Let's get salty! Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we're gonna try and speed run the rest. I don't wanna bog you down with too many more videos. We'll do one last big review. So we're gonna go through the remainder of the classes and neutrals and we're gonna start off with Nova's most dreaded card, the Rogue Questline, find the imposter. You have to play two SI7 cards. So that's like SI7 agent and so a bunch of new cards we'll talk about later. But first you play two, you get two spy gizmos in your hand and these are like spare parts. They're kind of random. One, uh, I'll, I'll show them here, I'll show a graph graphic of them but one is like give a minion plus to attack and stealth one is return an enemy minion to its owner's hand they can't play it next turn literally stuck in their hand so like a one mana sap but pretty annoying uh, you get a one mana three two mech look at three cards of your opponent's deck put, w pick one to put on the top so you know what they'll draw hidden gyro blade a one mana three two weapon throw this at a random enemy minion death rattle so it it's like extra a little bit of a damage it's really good and then you have undercover mole one mana two three after this attacks add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class these are all really good cards they're like value they could be removal they're all understated for their effect so you just have to play two si cards and you get some good stuff so anyways uh the next the next part you have to do is learn the truth play two si7 cards again you get another gizmo card to your hand and then you have marked a traitor we have to play two more so it's six in total to complete the quest line and you get spy master scabs and battle cry you add one of each gizmo to your hand Hand. so you get five insanely good cards but i feel like um i feel like the scabs part of the part is actually the worst i feel like just getting a couple of like tempo cards along with your si7 cards is actually pretty solid like all these cards are quite good probably the worst one is like give a minion attack and stealth but overall they're not bad at all and then you play scabs and it's like yesera kind of five minutes seven seven you gain a bunch of value it's pretty effective it's a pretty it just feels like a tempo type of value card. It's not like a win condition. Uh, you can shadow step scabs as well. You can 10 woo it. You can keep bouncing it and getting more gizmos. And overall, I think it's a playable quest line. The SI cards aren't the worst in the world. We'll get to them, like I said. But yeah, maybe scabs is good. I don't think it's busted or anything. I just think it's a solid card. I'm going to give it a three out of five in standard, a three out of five in wild, just because why not? It might see some play in wild. Um, and overall, I, I've seen some people crapping on it, but overall, I think it's not that bad at all but uh nova can rest easy i don't think it's completely busted uh next we have an si7 card it's a one mana tradable card deal three damage to an undamaged character it's a good removal card if you're playing find the imposter you're playing this card it's tradable so it can draw relatively cheaply it's a good card i'm gonna give it three in standard a two in wild and overall yeah pretty solid card we have maestra of the masquerade two minute three two you start the game as a different class until you play a rogue card basically you're gonna disguise what your class is to your opponent they're gonna think you're something else mulligan potentially wrong and then you play a rogue card and you turn around so that's basically it your stealth you're, you're kind of like it's a mind games card feels pretty memey i don't think it's worth the card slot but it's pretty funny but i'll give it a one in standard a wild top tier like five star meme flavor i just don't think you want to waste a card spot on that mind games aspect and there's burgle implications a little bit but again you have to play the rogue it's it's just not worth that hassle next we have lone shark three mana three four battle cry give your opponent a coin death rally you get two so they get the proactive coin you have to wait a while you can synergize it with like your uh the sketchy information or the the new weapon and all that well i feel like giving your opponent a coin can be way too detrimental for the upside of getting two it's a sweet little flavor full card but i'm gonna give it two in standard wild i don't see it making the cut we have si7 operative three mana two four rush after this attacks a minion gain stealth um i mean you're running the quest line you're probably running this the attacks not great only two attack but it's likely to live on curve and then you get stealth and it doesn't die so and there has some implications with like uh drawing with gray heart sage and all of that I'll give it a three. I think the SI7 stuff is okay. It's not terrible. I'll give it a three in standard and a two in wild. We have SI7 information, four mana, three, three, battle cry game, plus one, plus one for each SI7 card you played this game. So if you played two, it's a four mana, five, five, which just makes it good. Because by the time you turn four, there's a good chance you played SI7 agent extortion operative. Then you have a bunch of stats and it's only going to get bigger from there. It counts as itself too. So you shadow step it and play it again. Just a lot of stats. I think it's decent. I'll give a three in standard a two in wild i don't think the si7 stuff's working i know i gave the the side quest a three i just forgot about that so you can give that a two in wild from back there what we could just forget that i even said that and lastly we have si7 assassin seven mana four four 
uh, costs one less for each i7 si7 you play this game combo destroying enemy minion um that's pretty damn solid and it's not random so you should be able to pick it's like a vile spine slayer and this set basically this gets to five it's a better vile signs vile spine slayer this is a really insanely good card very good um all the si7 cards are pretty solid but this one to me just insane tempo removing something again good with step it counts itself so if you step it it'll discount itself from when you played it i'm gonna give this a four i think it's the best si7 card out there and i'll give it a two in wild because yeah i don't think the si7 stuff will make the cut uh shaman gets a one mana spell draw an overload card uh it's one mana draw card i don't think you're playing this uh the overload stuff is definitely worth it uh this the quest line's good maybe it is just for the quest line it's one mana draw specific card i'd say one mana draw card's not typically worth it but the fact that it does draw the specific overload card and you want to cycle for the quest line and i do think it's worth it i'll give it a three uh in standard and uh well two in wild i don't think it's going to be as relevant there we have auction house gavel a new weapon two mana two two after hero attacks reduce the cost of a battle cry minion in your hand by one just one minion um i don't think it's a big enough impact it's got some like combo synergies with like bolner hammer beak and can do some some shutter walk shenanigans but overall i don't think it's impactful enough two mana two two weapons just kind of suck i'll give it a two in standard and wild we have charged call three mana spell discover a one mini uh one cost minion and summon it upgraded for each overload card you play this game so basically uh you get uh, just a couple overload cards so you can discover a three drop if you've just if you've overloaded like uh played eight overload cards you can get a nine drop um it's a flexible card is it worth the slot is the stat the minion gonna be enough i don't don't think so it's pretty crazy though you can get like a three mana ten drop but um it's got to be impactful typically and i don't i just think shaman is a lot of good stuff and i don't think this sneaks in so i'm gonna give this a two in standard or two in wild but a uh, pretty crazy card we have canal sloggers four mana six four rush life steal overload one so this is an overload card it's proactive you only overload one and you heal for six that's a really good card it's really good at the quest line. It's some sustain, some healing, removal. It's an elemental. You can play it with the uh, Dungeoneer. Just a really solid card. It's really good. I'm going to give it a four in standard. I'll give it a four in wild because why not? It's just really good. It's just rush lifesteal. That's a lot of healing, a lot of removal. And the overload is pretty good with the quest line and it's not crippling overload at all. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, we have Granite Forgeborn, four mana, four, five elemental battle cry, reduce the cost of elementals in your hand and deck by one. This is just bonkers. This is just bonkers. It's a premium stat at minion. It hits everything. This could be like minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 mana. And you can tutor it. It's just, this card's crazy what like absolutely ridiculous shaman it's i i swear there's gonna be a shaman balance patch pretty quickly um i'm gonna give this a five in standard i think it's just an auto include why would you not want that discount on everything it's not just your hand that's just ridiculous and in wild i'll give it a four because the elemental shaman's not as good but it's still really good like the uh you have galakron shaman this card is just ridiculous uh we've spirit alpha four minute two five after you play a card with overload summon a two three spirit wolf with taunt we see a lot of these cards you know like you play a spell you get something um it's good but it's expensive and there's like you've seen the other shaman cards you don't want to play this you want to do other broken stuff so i'll give it two in standard two in wild not quite good enough there next we have the warlock cards that we haven't covered yet and we'll start with a bloodbound imp this was like the leaks kind of card two minute two five whenever this attacks deal two damage to your hero a uh, good self-damaging card will work with the quest line i think the quest line is garbage in standard i think warlock's in a rough spot i'm giving this a two in standard in wild with broomstick dark lair all of that i still think it might be a bit too slow but it's gonna live um i just feel like that list is really refined not gonna make the cut we'll give it a two in wild as well we have dreaded mount three mana spell give him minion plus one plus one when it dies summon an endless dread steed what that is is tamsman's dread seed death row at the end of your turn summon tamsman it's basically goes infinite it's the old dread steed you'll keep getting the one one back but that's just not impactful enough i don't see that being a legitimate card it's just it's just a one one it just it doesn't do enough so i and simon a shadow spell there's nothing really too much to this card i think it's just garbage i'm gonna give it a one in standard a one in wild last warlock card here is entitled customer six minute three two horrible stats battle cry deal damage equal to your hand size to all their minions so this will basically clear the board including your own minions it's all of their minions but uh reno lock's gonna be running this in wild for sure uh, any hand lock deck that likes a lot of cards is gonna be running it's gonna clear the board really reliably you just need four or five cards it's basically a flame strike warlock's not gonna have a problem with this 
So this card seems really, really, really good as a board clear. And I'm actually going to give this a five in standard, a five in wild. I think this is auto include in any slower warlock deck. It's that good to get that big uh, board clear. Like you're always going to be getting good value out of that. Next, we have the war, uh, warrior cards and we have the new warrior quest line, Raid of the Docks, where you have to start off with play three pirates. Your reward is you draw a weapon. Draw a weapon. Uh, the next part of the quest line is you play two pirates, you deal two damage to a random enemy twice. Um, not fantastic and it, it could be anything. And then your last reward is uh, Captain Ricard after playing two more pirates. So you have to play uh, five, seven pirates in total. And your reward is you summon the Juggernaut. And the Juggernaut is basically an uh, uninteractable token on the board that uh, at the start of your turn, you summon a pirate, equip a warrior weapon, and fire two cannons that deal two damage. That is a spicy Juggernaut. So I'm assuming the pirate will be random. You'll equip a weapon every single turn and you'll fire two cannons that deal two damage so it's just infinite value it's infinite value kind of re reminiscent of like the old war uh warlock uh quest with like you getting the flame imps but this is actually does something it plays two damage it's like the ultimate mid-range smorkish type card um pretty crazy um it's at the start of your turn though so the pirate will be will have like summoning sickness won't be able to proactively do anything unless it's like one of the rush minions uh crazy card it's really hard to evaluate this one you have to play a bunch of pirates pirates aren't great in standard right now um this definitely feels better in wild we'll talk about that in a sec i just don't see it coming together in standard like the reward to me is not quite worth it uh rush warrior control warrior all that stuff seems better but it's really cool it's really flavorful i'll give it a three in standard it probably pops up it probably is workable and in wild i'll give it a four because pirate warrior can definitely get this done in no no time at all and the reward's pretty sweet it might not be worth it it might not be worth it, but um, it'll be really very popular wild deck. I can tell you that much right away. Uh, we have Cowardly Grunt, six mana, six two. Death Rattle, summon a minion from your deck. Unless you're playing very specific big warrior stuff, pretty bad, but uh, you know, you could just slam it out there and hope it just, you know, you don't die and all that stuff. Uh, kind of messes with like your other cards that recruit out your other cards. Like it, it's pretty awful. I'm gonna give this a one in standard wild. I know big warrior is a thing, but like, I feel like it screws up big warrior as much as it could kind of help it out. We have cargo guard, three minute, two, four at the end of your turn, gain three armor awesome anti-aggro card you just gain armor this is a pirate can go on the deck but it seems kind of counterintuitive to the whole pirate strategy if you're playing more of an aggressive thing i don't know uh really cool card though you'll see playing control for sure you have to kill it because your opponent keep gaining armor and all that um i'm gonna give it four in standard a four in wild because like odd warrior why wouldn't they want to run this like it's just a really really solid card we have Stormwind freebooter three minute three three pirate another pirate here battle cry give your hero plus to attack this turn so it's actually kind of a bad pirate to summon off the juggernaut but a good card uh it's effectively a three mana five three and um it's just solid uh, in standard i'll give it a three wild i'll give it a two because i think there's better three drop pirates but definitely not a bad card at all we have harbor scamp two minute two two battle cry draw pirate give this a four in standard or wild like you're gonna play this as a pirate it draws a pirate it's a body it's just good not much more to it than that that's just like an auto include in a lot of pirate decks and lastly we got the neutral card so let's go through these as quickly as we can we have lady prester six minus six seven legendary uh you battle cry transform minions into your deck in your deck in a random dragons that keep their original stats and costs so you could play a very low curve deck and then just play this and get a bunch of really cheap dragons and scam is that gonna make the cut I don't think so. It's a really crazy meme card, though. I'll give it two in standard, two in wild, but who knows? Maybe somebody can figure it out how to really utilize it, but really crazy flavor on that one. We have Cheesemonger, four mana, three, six. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, add a random spell with the same cost to your hand. I mean, it's that's something. You get random spells, but you don't get the mana cheat off of it. It's a cheat. It, you're, it's really going to try and cheese people out. I don't think it's viable. I'll give it a two in standard, two in wild, but uh, I'm pretty... F I love the flavor of the set. The set has some sweet flavor. We have Nobleman, three minute, two, three, battle cry. Create a golden copy of random card in your hand. So this is extra value in your hand. It's kind of reminiscent of old uh, Zola. Uh, I, you can't target it. It's kind of random, but you can manipulate things. Get another Shutterwalk in wild. Who knows? I'm going to give this a two in standard, but a three in wild, because I think you can make some real shenanigans work with this especially with cards like brand and all of that 
We have Enthusiastic Banker, three mana two three at the end of your turn. Store uh, store a card from your deck. Death Rattle, add the store cards to your hand. So basically this is a way of like just drawing cards. It, it like puts it into the minion and then when it dies, the the card will go from the, your deck into your hand. Really cool card. Um, And if it doesn't die, you get more and more of these right. At the, in fact, right at the end of your turn. Um, I have no idea what this card's gonna do. These cards are really interesting. Um. I'll give it three in standard wild. I have no idea how to evaluate it, but you are guaranteed to at least get a card off of it unless it's transformed or stolen uh, right away. So that in itself is value and it can snowball. So I think it will pop up in some decks. We have Stockage Prisoner, two mana, five, four. Starts dormant after you play three cards, this awakens. So put this into a cheap deck like a Miracle Rogue and you just get a five, four active really quickly i could see a miracle rogue wanting this if they really care about the stats it's just so rare in hearthstone these days where stats matter and cheating out a two mana five four a little bit quicker i don't think we'll make the cut it's just stats rarely matter it doesn't have rush no taunt i'm gonna give it a two in standard wild just not quite there we have a 10 mana five four rush costs one less for each cost each card in your hand so hand lock if you have like eight cards in your hand this is two mana five four i feel like this is just a warlock card or maybe a miracle rogue type card or whatever i, I think warlock can utilize this there's a lot of hand luck stuff going on and uh this also screws with the evolve pool getting random 10 drops feels a lot worse so i'll give it three in standard for warlock in two and wild because i don't think warlock will care about that enough in wild we have entrapped sorcerers three mana three four battle cry if you control a quest discover a spell here we go we got a quest a beneficiary card if you're playing a slower quest line you're gonna run this because discovering a spell is good premium stats honestly it's gonna be better than drawing a card i will give this a four in standard in a four and wild because there's plenty of quest decks that will want to utilize this and quest mage hey is quest mage coming back because of this who knows we have encumbered pack mule two minute two three would taunt when you draw this add a copy of it to your hand so this can mill yourself but I don't know, it's a little bit of value. Uh, Taunt Warrior with the quest in Wild can use this, but I don't see uh, enough of it to be a good enough card. Maybe a Hunter deck because it's a beast. I'll give it two in Standard and Wild, but definitely not horrendous. Really good Arena card though. Uh, we have Moarg, Forge Fiend, eight mana, eight, eight, Taunt, Death Rattle, gain eight air armor. It's okay, but I don't think you're hard running this in any deck. I'll give it a two in standard or wild, but honestly, you get it off as like random generation. That can be a lifesaver as well. We have City Architect, six mana, four, four, battle cry, summon two, zero, five, castle walls with taunt. Um, zero, like, zero, five, it just doesn't trade up with anything. The bodies all suck. Uh, it's an arena card. I'll give it that, but that's about it. I'll give it a one in standard, a one in wild. We have Lion's Guard, five mana, four, six. If you have 15 or less health, gain plus two, four in taunt. So that's a six, 10 in taunt for five mana. If you're low on health, I feel like you can do better stuff with that, but it's not bad as an anti-aggro card. I'll give it a two in standard or two in wild. We have Battleground, Blademaster, five mana, five, five. Adjacent minions have Wind Fury. This is like one of the first times I can think of where you can give Wind Fury outside of a Zephyrus to a minion outside of Shaman. And this could be potentially busted. They bust, buff something up with whatever. Um, one class will abuse this card. This will be abused by some class somewhere in some combo deck. I will give it a three in standard, a three in wild, because there's no way that being able to give a minion wind fury is not really abusable in other classes, like other than uh, a, like a shaman. Like think about this with Inquisitor, a demon hunter. If you can manage that one, that is kind of insane. We have Stormwind Guard, five into four, five, taunt, Balgrai, give adjacent minions plus one, plus one. It's, this is like Fungal Mancer, but half the stats but you get a big minion it's a good mid-range uh mid-range aggro card i'll give it a three in standard uh three in wild it'll pop up in some decks like odd decks could use this certainly not bad and uh it's a lot of stats uh, if you think about it basically a five mana seven uh six uh, a six seven that's pretty good we have guild trader four mana three four tradable spell damage plus two used to be a four mana two two gave you spell damage plus two now you get a three four and it's tradable spell damage decks will like this I'm give it three in standard uh two in wild because i just don't see how that's factoring in too much but evolved kobold is crying in a corner we have royal librarian four minute three four tradable battle cry silence a minion so if you want to tech into silence this is pretty good it's like spellbreaker but you can just trade it away it's a really solid tech card i'll give it three in standard three in wild we have stubborn suspect three mana three three death rile summon a random three cost minion piloted shredder 
is really crying in a corner um really good i think death rattle demon hunter can use this i it's just shredder but a lot better in a lot of ways doesn't have four attack but a three cost minion it's usually better than two cost minions so we'll give it a three in standard three in wild we have package runner three minute five six. Oh my god it's broken can only attack via at least eight cards in hand not so broken unless you're playing handlock but then you want to be life tapping and doing other things i just it feels anti-synergistic with hand decks where you want to be a, you're not trying to be aggressive and do i don't know it's a weird handlock card maybe it works there but i'm gonna give it two in standard two in wild i i don't quite see it working out we have norshire farmer three minute three three battle cry choose a friendly beast Th shuffle three 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 copies into your deck really cool card there will be a beast deck that can abuse this somewhere and who knows potentially go infinite apexus primes or whatever the uh hunter le uh, prime legendary that, that's insane right i don't know i'll give it three in standard uh three in wild it has some versatility we have traveling merchant three minute two three tradable minion battle cry game plus one plus one for each other friendly mini control um just a middling stat bomb i don't see it I, even the tradable aspect doesn't make this playable to me one in standard one in wild deep run engineer two minute one two battle cry discover a mech it costs one less um if you're playing a mech deck sure but i don't really see what mech decks are really wanting this at all it's okay i'll give it a two in standard two in wild we have floors two minute two three at the end of your turn reduce the cost of a nature spell in your hand by one not a strong enough effect to warrant really running this i'm going to give it a two in standard two in wild we have si7 skulker you can run this in the rogue quest line through two minute two two stealth battle cry the next card you draw costs one less good card it's gonna live most likely it's gonna act work in the rogue quest line getting a mana cheat solid i will give this a three but basically just for rogue and uh, in standard and a two in wild and lastly we have stockades guard one minute one two battle cry give a friendly minion taunt sun fury protector kind of it's a cool little card but i don't see it seem play i'll give it a two in stare and two in wild there you go that is every card as quickly as we can review series done tune in tomorrow i'm gonna be covering uh the tavern pass the battle pass reviewing that and we'll start going over the best cards the expansion and then get into some fun stuff expansions coming soon hope you guys all enjoy this have a great day and stay salty my friends mm -hmm.